One of the great things about using a system like Game On is it forces you, well, it doesn't force you, but I guess it's a, a natural consequence of using this system that it leads to introspection. Am I doing this right? Could I be doing this better? How can I leverage this to, to engage students at a deeper level and empower them to work at their own pace? And one of the great things about Game On is it forces teachers to kind of change their curriculum delivery system to leverage videos to allow students to work at their own pace. Okay, it breaks that Goldilocks classroom where it's the speed at which information is disseminated to students happens just right for a few kids. And for others, it's too slow or too fast. Slow down. I didn't get that. I was absent yesterday. What did we do? So, last Friday, a teacher visited Valhalla and sat in the classroom all period. And we talked in between me helping kids when they had questions. You know, the kids start the class. They're working independently. Um, we were able to have a long, in-depth discussion, and he got to see how kids interacted with the game and the curriculum, and he asked a lot of probing questions, which led me to go, well, I can't say the word that came to mind, but I'm doing it wrong. And part of what I'm doing wrong has to do, well, and when I explained the store, the landing page categories and sections, I wanted to talk about this, but I didn't want to go bird walking. Um, it lies in the root of my system here, my three-tiered loot system, XB for leveling, health for classroom management, and gold for buy-in stuff. Now, if gold's for buy-in stuff, why do I have health sitting here in my store as a currency. I have that because the exchange, you can exchange health for gold or gold for health. And I used to have time as another, um, another currency called minutes. And that's why the time bank and um, need a better term here because this is actually where you're borrowing time um, or you're going into debt for time you missed in class. Um, but I'm using two different currencies and this makes no sense. And what makes total sense if gold and health are completely interchangeable with no consequence to moving it back and forth. So health in that regard becomes a savings account kids can spend but it's like earning money by donating blood. And as long as you wait an appropriate amount of time before donating the next pint, um, you're gonna be okay and you're helping other people out, so great. Um, that blood metaphor breaks down here, but what I'm trying to say is if you donate pint after pint after pint, bad things will happen to your body if you do this in a very short period of time. So what would happen if students couldn't spend health? And that was my epiphany. And part of the system was designed because I didn't want kids going into debt. But in real life, sometimes you run out of money and what do you got to do? You know, it's, it's, it's um, with the government shutdown right now, a lot of people are discovering this because a startling amount of people uh, live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck due to sometimes circumstances beyond their control, sometimes bad decisions. You know, stuff happens. We all make mistakes. But in this classroom, is there a better way? And for me, I think eliminating health to gold, eliminating this category altogether, and just allowing gold to be invested in your health. Then a new mechanism arises, and it's strategy-based. Your health sitting at 100, and the only way your health goes down is if you misbehave, if you make bad decisions, and it's a classroom management consequence. But the only way your health goes up, you could build it into the quest, but I'm thinking 
what if you could buy health with gold, but you had to kind of keep a savings account? Because what happens when you're tardy that sixth time? Because one health is 30 gold. So if a tardy is 30 gold, and then after you get past five, it becomes 60 gold, well, that's a steep price to pay. What would happen if you didn't have 60 gold? Well, in talking to Mick um, about this mechanism, he says he could just code something into the store item because we already have the go negative option. You can allow students to go negative, but I don't want them just spending without consequence. What if there were kind of a loan shark built into this where there was a multiplier, say, say 150%. You know, so if you had to spend, you had zero gold and you hit that six tardy and you had to spend 60 gold, it would actually cost you 90. Now, that's punishing, but these unexcused tardies, that's a bad decision kids are making because we're supposed to be preparing them for the real world. So without bird walking into the amount of gold here, and amounts always balance out by your, your quest building and what the rewards are. That's a whole nother discussion is trying to balance currency. Um, but I have a lot of quests, so there are a lot of opportunities for students to earn gold. So you can see I've got 3,000 here, which allows me to buy, you know, crazy stuff like playing games all period or sleeping in class. And boy, some of these short nights where I wake up way too early, um, I could use one of those sleeping class passes. <laughs> of course, that would be a really bad decision on my part, but you know, life goes on. Uh, so it, all I wanted to do was to share this idea of a mechanism for next year, which I plan to employ. And for the rest of this year, I'm going to think about it and you know, work it out in my head and try to figure out how I can make this work most effectively so kids have plenty of time in order to rack up some gold because they get these free passes for not only restroom and tardies and absences, um, so they have a little cushion. So by the time they need to be spending gold, they will have accumulated some. And then they face that decision, when do I invest in my own health? This is kind of like a retirement fund, uh, but you're going to spend it all near the end of the year, if not sooner, because you can't take it with you.